Your stuff's so good. Whoa! It, it doesn't taste like anything. Chris, we are actually here in the Eastern Woodlands. We are like a thousand miles away from Texas right now to give you guys a more fun experience. We're gonna be out here exploring some awesome, awesome forests and uh, just amazing, vast, just landscapes of nothingness out here. Hopefully the fishing, the plant life, all the foraging, the hunting, all that stuff is gonna be so much better. So uh, I think this is gonna be one heck of a fun trip. It's gonna be a rainy, multi-day overnight adventures. Well. We have plans to do some primitive camping, but the road is getting washed away and it's actually it pretty deep. It's like three or four feet, so we don't want to take our SUV out before we hit a trailhead so we can go hike in. So it looks like we're going to have to keep looking. This uh, rainy season in the eastern woodlands. <laughs> oh man, we're going to keep searching though. I found Briarfoot! Edible, baby! Always keep looking. We got some more right here too. Right there. There's stuff everywhere, man. Yep. This stuff's so good. Poison ivy is very prevalent out here for anybody who's local in the uh, more of the East Coast region, not in Texas, but poison ivy is everywhere. And this right here, is this is jewelweed. And the good thing, this is a nature's antidote to poison ivy. A lot of people think that foraging, medicinals, wild edibles is very boring, and in a sense it is. You're basically nature's, it's nature's grocery store. It's not exciting. But having those antidotes, if you are out in the woods and you're stuck in a situation, you get skin irritations and it starts cutting up your skin, open wounds, infections, knowing what those medicinal plants are to help you in those ailments to make your situation not as crappy is pretty important. Hey right, guys, so we are actually in luck now. We actually talked to the National Forest Service and the conservation agents over there. We, we found an education center. Uh, we have no signal here, like I said. We just kind of got lucky and drove by them. And they led us to an area where we can do like hiking primitive camping, which is going to be awesome. So we're, I think the area we're going to is 16,000 acres of untouched landscape that we could basically just get lost in. There's going to be creeks and streams leads into major rivers. There's going to be trout fishing. I mean, if this works out the way it wants to, it's going to be freaking awesome, man. I'm super, super, super excited. Dude, is this just not amazing? Beautiful. What's up everybody? So I am here with my buddy Chris Deslow from Four Directions Bushcraft. We are actually here in his stomping ground on his uh, his home turf. We are in the eastern woodlands. We have access to this amazing like 16,000 acres. So for the next couple days, this is gonna be basically my playground. We're gonna explore. I have no knowledge of this area. And we're just gonna see what we can find, what type of things we can hunt, fish, trap, and just have an awesome time. So for the next couple of days, man, it's gonna be awesome. But first, our priorities are gonna be shelter, fire, and water, man. So uh, let's get started, bud. Let's do it. While I'm finishing up my shelter, we're gonna have Chris, he's gonna make the actual fire pit for us. So we actually have a fire. Everything out here is literally soaked, drenched. There's been flooding in the surrounding areas. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be fun, but we're gonna show you obviously that uh, the fire starting stuff we're gonna be using. Dry wood, it won't matter. We'll make it happen, it'll work.
should go once I get my balance here. That's the beauty of it. Now I can turn it up on itself or I can just leave it like that. And once that gets going, which it already is, it doesn't take long, I can just feed these little pencil sized sticks in there. Yep. I've already got them processed up. If they were dry, I wouldn't have to process these. I'd just put them right on top of the waxwood stick. But because everything is just soaking wet, it's got to dry first. I'm trying to find some rocks for things like our for grills and platforms, fire rings for the fire pit. These rocks are absolutely everywhere out here. All right. While Chris is tending to the fire for us, he's uh, pretty much the fire master. So for night one, I figured to make sure, since we didn't have a lot of time, make sure it got done right the first time, let him handle that. But I'm trying to build a rock platform. So if it rains tonight with the canopy, with my shelter, I can put my pack right here underneath the tarp and it's still protected even if it rains. It's just a little quick idea because this area is so crazy full of rocks. Figured it would uh, be a quick in a pinch. I can create a hanging platform for it, build a chair and do all that stuff later, but just for a quick fix, I wanted to go ahead and uh, get it done quick, fast, and hurry. Oh, dude, this is like a little creek, dude. It sounded so much louder. It sounded like a river. It did. I wonder where the actual noise is coming from. Tastes good though. You taste your water yet? Not yet. I got the filter of can. Oh, right on, bud. But this being so close, it's gonna be a huge benefit. Yeah, we're definitely gonna have to bring our big bags to, uh, in the morning when we can see everything. Maybe we'll try to actually find an actual river. Find the source of this. Oh, it feels great. <sighs> if it gets too hot tomorrow, I'm waiting this. Look at this, I just found this. What? A giant wood ear mushroom, dude. Really? Just right on the side of this branch. I was about to throw it in the fire. Let me see. I mean, it's gigantic. It's Holy, a, oh yeah, guys, oh, stay, stay there, dude. I'm gonna show them. Oh like my gosh, this thing both. is huge. Guys, this thing is so huge. And if I'm not mistaken, these, these are edible. Right? These are edible. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Dude, these, these are, are edible. These are humongous. I think I, I don't really think they taste like anything. They're kind of gelatinous, but here, guys, check this out. This is a monster. I mean, it looks like an ear, you know, and that's where it gets its name. That is crazy. Now that is gonna help for dinner while we're out here, man, big time. It is a big flappy ear mushroom, <laughs> mushroom right? And obviously, this is what your great grandfather has when he's playing chess with you in the nursing home. <laughs> big old gelatinous <laughs> ears. So these are all good, and obviously if we can't positively identify these, then we're not going to eat them. But Yeah, are... and if you're not 100% sure on mushrooms, because a lot of them can be toxic if you're not careful, make sure you know 100%. We're 100% on these, so we're okay, but like I said, I'm seeing the smaller one. I want to save this for a meal. So. And I mean... It, it doesn't taste like anything. It's crunchy. Have you ever tastes had, like have an you, ear. Have you ever... <laughs> 
if this have you have you ever had like bubble tea? Yeah, yeah, uh, you yeah, know, yeah. You know the little bubbles, the balls that are in there. That's what it tastes like. Kind it's, of. It's crunchy. It, this is fresh too. This is just. So, we can add this to anything, or Boom. eat it just like we're doing. Heck yeah, man! Dinner. Well, this Beautiful. is part of dinner. Oh, that's like starting to look good. Mm-hmm. You can't beat those. Gendry, start the forge. <laughs> yeah, so we found another little creek bed, and there are some massive frogs in here. Since I'm holding my big rig, I'm going to let Chris try to sneak up on it like a ninja. They're stunned too. Well, at least we know we can do some uh, frog gigging tomorrow, dude. Frog legs, I'll take it if we can get if we can get that a few dozen. That was a giant frog. <laughs> yeah, it was. We can get one now. What wood did I cut? I was that was that. Birch poplar? This, what is that? I think this might be poplar. It's Heck, this really, is really soft. It's really soft. You hear the you hear the, the crickets out and all the bugs and all the humming out? It's, oh man. It's so peaceful it's beautiful. out. Beautiful. You get the birds chirping a little bit. So we'll have no problem getting some frogs with this tonight. It'll be good for dinner. So we weren't too prepared for this. We won't have bank line or anything, but. Oh, I just messed you up. No, you're good, bud. Hold. Nah. All right, that'll do. Here, let's go find a small stick for you so you can wedge that in between. Okay. Here, is that too big or do you want something that might smaller? Be good. If yeah. It's, if it's out that might do it's real tight I just need another one It is really tight in there, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's tattered in Jenna Jameson spandex. <laughs> All right, while he's finishing that frog gig, I'm gonna go and do a little bit more scouting and see how many uh, frogs we got, see if I can uh, set them up real nice. Oh, man, frog legs for dinner would be so good. Oh, super excited. So this is the big bushcraft frog gig spear that I cut down for Chris while we're making. I mean, we wanted to make sure we could get as far because we weren't sure where on the bank they might be, so. Totally primitive, real quick setup. No, this was definitely quick and dirty, but that'll definitely do the trick, man, for sure. Did you get him?
we're gonna uh, grab my slingshot. We're gonna take the spear, and I, I think we're gonna keep night hunting a little bit. Cause uh, I mean, we may not catch anything for the first day, but if we can get a, even a small meal, it'll be totally worth it. I think foraging is not gonna make a whole lot of sense, but but uh, I think at the end of it, it's gonna be uh, worthwhile for us to chase some frogs. I don't know, squirrels, raccoons, whatever we can get our hands on, man. So uh, get rodents for dinner. Dude, I think we just did it. We did it. We got a land bridge. Yeah. Whoop, whoop. Now I just got to pray I don't fall on my face or slip or crush my nuts. Hey, the wood's finally drying out. That's good. Yeah, that fire's going strong. Oh, that feels so good. It's hot. It's real nice. All right, y'all. Well, we found we uh, the flooded creek. Uh, as you guys got to see, uh, Chris being an awesome teammate, built a land bridge for me so I could get across. But, um... I think we're just going to enjoy the fire for a little bit, kind of dry out our socks and our boots just a smidge and just hit the hay and we're going to I think start early in the morning, it's early in the morning tomorrow. Yeah. <sighs> we'll have a lot to do in the morning, but we'll be able to get a lot of exploring done in the, during the daylight and we'll be able to, you know, find any rivers or springs or creeks or whatever we have and see what fishing opportunities we might have cuz I I would love some fish. Definitely. That'd be a good meal tomorrow. All right, y'all. So, chilling in the hammock. There is legitimately 100% no service out here. <laughs> like I said, we're surrounded by 16,000 acres of absolutely nothing, which is awesome. It's a very rare treat to have access to this much land that we can just explore. Uh, right now, there's a lot of flooding going on, but I still think it's going to make it fun. But like I said, I got a place to sleep. We got some water, got a fire. I ain't mad. And the sounds coming out of this freaking forest, dude, are so it's so peaceful. You got the bugs chirping, you got frogs, you know, humming around. I did so awesome. But anyway, guys, stay tuned for day two. Now that we have just pretty much the coolest Narnian spot in the world, where I think we're gonna just just crush it tomorrow. I think we're gonna have a lot of fun exploring. Hopefully, we'll be able to show you all the awesome plant life and wildlife, the medicinals, the edibles, the fungi. I mean, just all the things tomorrow is gonna be sick. So. Later. Good morning, everybody. Mm. It's a day two. It's early. All right. Let's go on with the day. Time to get the firewood. All right guys, so I'm gonna get a fire started so I can get some tea this morning, get a little bit of caffeine and some hot liquids. But uh, Chris over there, he's uh, digging a platform for a whole new area, because we're only, like I said, we're only here for three days. And he didn't bring a sleeping bag or an underquilt or anything for his hammock, so he's just gonna have some fun and experiment, and he's gonna build kind of like a raised bed, like a, like a semi-primitive bushcraft uh, shelter, just to give you guys an idea of some of the options we can have in a very short amount of time of the different options you could have in an outdoor kind of scenario. If you wanted to go primitive, bring a lightweight hammock, we're just gonna show you some fun uh, shelter options. So I'm gonna get my fire started. I'm gonna leave this kind of messy. But we're gonna be using the uh, fat rope shreds from Pro Camp Tech. And I'm gonna be using my uh, fat wood fire steel from uh, uh, Four Directions Bushcraft, which is uh, Chris, the guy I'm with right now. So we're gonna 
Hopefully his stuff doesn't fail on camera. It would be embarrassing because the quality control president of the company is right here. So, you know, that'd be funny. Holes are like hella hot, man. It'll never fail. <laughs> It'll never fail. Boom. Got that going? <laughs> Remember, kids, fire lacks buddies. So give us some buddies. While I'm waiting for my wet, very inefficient fire to get started, Chris is building a primitive shelter, like I said, to kind of improve his situation because he doesn't have, um, he didn't bring an underquilt or a sleeping bag or anything like that. So the hammock was still very comfortable, but it's not as warm as he wants it to be. So he's gonna have some fun. My wet fire is gonna take about 30 freaking minutes and I figured in that amount of time, he'll probably saw through this and beast it out. So I figured you guys can uh, have some fun and watch that on time lapse. so enjoy. but I wanted to kind of, kind of put some context to some of the stuff we're doing. So uh, like this morning, he had a, basically a cowboy coffee this morning, but he just rocked out his water. He boiled it with a jet boil like hella fast. And we're just proving a point. If you're out here by yourself, at what point is it more time efficient just to bring a smidge more weight that can give you a container, speed up your uh, fire starting process and get you, you know, some of the fluids and food or whatever you might need just to get the day started. This dude's already working on a shelter, but because I'm going old school with my fire, it's taken a long time. And that's just the reality of what's going on. See, I'm still waiting on my fire because it's wet. And this dude is halfway done with the freaking shelter. Tell them though, if you had to like basically go primitive like I am with my fire versus using your jet boil for your coffee this morning, if he had to use non-modern materials to build a shelter, if he didn't have his folding saw or his shovel, I mean, you'd still be just trying to create the freaking ax or whatever yeah. just to start building. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, just, it's just that. I mean, cordage is the same way. You'll spend hours, you know, reverse wrapping cordage. Bringing bank line like 500 feet, which right. is like seven bucks, eight bucks, versus sitting there and spending time on yucca. Now, it's good to learn, y'all. We wanna make that That's clear. It's good to learn primitive it is. skills, but when exactly. is it good to balance the and merge both worlds between primitive and modern technology and just have a fun experience or getting things done? Because right yeah. now, this could still take like another 45 minutes, this is crazy. Yeah, I mean, so. it comes down to how, you know, calories, how, how much energy you have, yeah. time, and if you're in a true survival situation, you're going to use anything you can, you know, trash that you find, anything. Yeah, exactly. But On today's episode of Inefficient Firecraft with Chris, you're going to see him uh, knocking over the tree. And it's done. Yeah. I am still waiting on my dang tea. And it doesn't sound, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying, like, at, well, oh, I'm going to get a jet boil. And I, th I think for now on, I'm just gonna take a little bit of primitive, a little bit of modern, and we're just gonna have fun because it comes to a point where I, there's a whole bunch of things I wanna get done, but I'm literally waiting on caffeine and I'm just like losing my mind. How many cups of coffee is that right there? Like their fourth? This is <laughs> no. Yeah, this is about four or five here. I'm gonna heat this up though. Is 
See, those stainless steel ones, or even the titanium ones, they weigh a lot more. But I'm saying, man, it, they, it's just because they can go directly in the fire. Yeah, it doesn't it matter. Just right on top. Yeah. I like the bare bulk because of packability. I, I like it a lot, dude. I really do. This is cool because we get to see this versus this. I mean, we get to do a lot of compare and testing and field reviews and stuff like that. Just just being out here. Right. We're not even having to be analytical. You just get, guys get to see what's more efficient, what's worth the weight, what's worth the use. And I mean, you guys can make those decisions for yourself. And chime off in the comments as these episodes air. What do you prefer? Do you prefer the packability and the portability of the bare bowl? Do you like the robustness of those kettles? And like you're seeing right now, they all have pluses and minuses. Yep. I mean, they all do. So, What you find, dude? Man, these are giant pieces of fat wood. Ooh. Literally, they were just buried right up there. And the reason I could tell so easily is it's just striated down here at the end and rock solid. I was like, dude, just walking around like, oh, I found four huge chunks of fat wood for free. <laughs> so um, while I'm waiting for my tea to get all situated and everything, I'm going to do some looking around and see if I can't find some uh, some edible plants, like some sassafras or something, and kind of just munch on something while we're uh, waiting to actually go and uh, do some fishing today. Ooh, now this is going to be good. For anybody who lives in these areas, you'll know this plant really easy. But this is sassafras, and the easy way you can tell is it's got its singular leaf, then it has a double leaf, and it has the triple prong. But this is exactly what it looks like, and the whole thing is edible. Now it is really, really strong, but you can just eat this stuff all day, and there's a ton of it all around. So this is a little baby. I only took like one little leaf, but. There is everywhere, and it's invasive around here, so I mean, it's like there's no shortage. Ooh, now this, this right here, guys, this is awesome. If anybody knows what this is, sound off in the comments, even though I'm about to give it away here in a second. But this is called Yarrow. This is like the MVP of the woods. It is medicinal. It's basically like the aspirin of the woods. Um, there's a rumor that back in the day, Native Americans used to use this for like toothaches. But you can use this as a pain reliever. It's also an anti, um, sorry, it's also a coagulant, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Like I said, it's a medicinal plant that can be used for a variety of things. It's really, really good. Found this little guy. Uh, we found ourselves a turtle. Yeah, so this is this little guy. He's all clammed up. Like I said, we don't want to mess with him. We're going to go ahead and put him back where we found him. But yeah, you never know what you're going to run into out here. Ooh, guys, check that out. Do y'all know what that is? I'm going to keep looking and see if I... Haha, -ha, found it. Found some with flowers on it. That'll make it easy. All right, so this stuff right here is called wood sorrel. Now, this stuff is 100% edible. And it's so good. Mm. Think like a mix between like a lemon and a grape. If you don't like those fruits, it's not going to be good to you. Mm. You can put these in like a primitive salad. With like a tea. It'd be really, really good. But, mmm. I like just going around. If I find a huge patch of them like I do here, there's quite a few everywhere. I just pick up a little small thing and have a little forest snack while I'm out in the woods scouting like I am right now. Now, this is a bigger version. So is this of sassafras. And you dig the roots down in there and you pick one of these up, you're good to go. But like I said, this stuff's absolutely everywhere out here. But yeah, between this and wood sorrel, man. It's like my favorite wood snacks ever. <laughs> How's it going, man? Dude, this is like becoming a thing. It's coming together. Uh, oh, okay, see, this is what a lot of my uh, a lot of my subscribers suggested with uh, my Walmart challenge I did. Yeah. Was to like actually do a lean to and use the reflective thing and actually do what do what you're doing. This is a lot more intelligent. Yeah, hopefully it holds together. I mean, we don't have too we don't have high winds or anything. So this I is have, pretty thick though. It's not too bad. I have high hopes for it. Well, folks. About 24 hours 
after Christopher Deslow entered the woods, ate one too many mushrooms. Like I tell you kids at home, psychedelic drugs are bad, okay? He tore down a perfectly good shelter to what, go native? And then he's gonna put a microwave lid on the on the top of his shelter? The whole time I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I'm kidding, no, we're doing this... microwave himself? Is that what he's doing? <laughs> Just no guys, he's doing kidding. this for he's doing this for educational purposes. <laughs> to kind of he's doing it as an experiment but showing you guys like if we don't have a hammock, you know, you can do that. So Whew. Looks like my tea is done finally. Good to go. Mm. Uh Nothing like a warm brew in the morning. All right, y'all, so a little creature feature for you. He's got round eyes. So. We got ourselves a little tiny snake. Tiny wood snake. I don't know exactly the breed. I would like to assume a garter. But if anybody knows 100% offhand, let us know. But it's a little guy. Where, like I said, we're just going to put him down real quick. We found him. Fun little creature feature. Go ahead and let him go. Make sure he's undisturbed. Yep, there we go. Yep. All right, so uh, Chris and I are gonna get ready to head out, but before I do that, because all the wood's rotten, grab my little Al Mike hatchet, and we're gonna see if we can find some uh, fat wood real quick, nice little chunk of it, and we'll stick it in the fire so we can uh, slow roast my campfire and keep it uh, the coals nice and hot, burning nice and you know all that good stuff. All right, let's go, let's go, go, go. Oh, now guys, this is a treat. So, for the uninitiated out there, for the uncultured woodsmen out there, this just looks like a fallen dead stump. Well, this dead tree is also a pine tree. And all these branches and these big knotty sections, fat wood. All the things that I wish that I had in my home state of Texas. Texas, start planting some dang pine trees. Now, kids, is my fat wood turkey leg. <laughs> Not edible, but flammable. Stop staring at it. It's like crazy. Woo! Got me some fat wood. Gonna use that later. But uh, I think we are gonna go do some exploring and see if we can find some good water sources for some fishing, because we found some small creeks, but they're super shallow. Whew. Alrighty. Let's get to it. You ready to go, bud? Yep, I'm ready, man. Here you go. So 
we made it to a spring after about what three and a half miles or so walking through pretty hard hill like hill country territory lots of rocks everywhere but um we're just gonna stop and see uh, I found this bottle on the trail, and yes, we actually found this bottle. We found a bottle. Well, we found a pair of pliers, yeah. chainsaw blades. Um, it looks like some park rangers or whatever, because we're in a national forest, for you guys that don't know. And um, yeah, we uh, we 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 they just let, there was just little stuff littered, so we just picked it up and used it, and decided to go for it. So we're gonna see if we get lucky. Who knows? It could be a bust, but. We have a few other places to try. Today is our day to have fun, explore, make some mistakes, see if we get lucky. That looks good. Yeah, man, you might be right. Those air bubbles may just be from the uh, water settling, yeah. the water settling into the soil because this is a spring. Like this is crystal clear water, though. Well, the spring's pretty, nice and cold, clear water, but I think uh, there's, there's nothing, nothing happening. So. I think we're just gonna hang out for a minute. We're gonna rehydrate and then head back and look for greener pastures. Ooh. Well, we've gone about a mile or so. My feet hurt. So I'm gonna just get some water real quick. Oh man, guys. Is there any more? I got a treat for you. Hold on. <sighs> yeah, oh, there's another one. These are baby pine trees, little bitty babies. And these? are 100% edible. Mm. Telling you, this, these long walks, trail snacks, baby. Those little tiny baby ones. Oh, this, I have never been so glad to see this dang hammock. Oh. So for reference, we left camp at like 11.30, man. It is 4.10 or 1610 for anybody who does any type of military time. <sighs> Bro, that was like a good six miles, dude. Oh, man. That was, that was, that was hella crazy. That was rough. But I think I'm going to sit down in my hammock for a minute, rehydrate, and <sighs> I think we'll try some more hobo fishing a little bit because we know where another water source is, but... I got, I have never been so dang happy to see this hammock. See if I get lucky.
What it is is an automatic fishing reel. You guys probably heard of them. They're real nice, real easy to pack in. Uh, you set the tension. Fish pulls, and he's on tension no matter what. So it'll wear the fish out. The fish will be waiting for you. Alright, yo, um, well, out here like two hours, ain't nothing doing, not, well, not with, you know, the bait and everything that I have, there may be something I just limited with what I have with me. Well, y'all, I'm gonna level with you, Chris beat me back by a couple minutes when we were doing fishing and whatever the th whatever we thought we were doing um but uh that hike was that, that beat me up man and we shouldn't have done it to be honest i think uh i had caffeine in the morning 160 milligrams will give you a false sense of wonder womanism you know what i'm saying there we go all right so we're going to go after foraging so we make sure we get some food that little nice little 15 20 minutes in the hammock was nice. So, time to roll. These are some really big leaves from sassafras. So, we're going to take our foraging pouches. Go ahead and collect these bad boys up. Then we're going to go off and get some wood sorrel. There's a ton of this stuff. Like a ton and this is just one tree. There's a whole tree over there. I mean, we're gonna be we're gonna be good to go. So this is a good size foraging pouch, and we got pretty much a whole bag. That's just sassafras. Now I'm gonna be uh, going after the wood sorrel, and we'll be good to go. Like I said, we need to get our strength, and we just need to get something in our system. Okay. That's some protein. That will get us a little bit of protein. That that will that will. Hey, we're we're not going completely vegan. Shit. Not completely vegan tonight, buddy. We got us something. Woo! Not too bad. Worked just like it was supposed to. He's a little guy. Not a total failure. That'll work though. Chris caught this, but it's not a lot of protein. We'll probably get laughed at, but you know what? When you got nothing else, you gotta take what you can get. So I think he's gonna rebate the lines. See if we can get a few more of these. And we could actually, you know, make a little, uh, you know, fish sticks meal out of this, you know. Yeah. Is wood sorrel. We're going to gather up as much of this as we can to kind of give some tart and sweetness to our stew food. Just to kind of tang it up a little bit and have some fun. Good news is we did catch some bluegill. And we're going to keep baiting and try to get some more. We're going to let Chris handle that. And uh, I think we'll have a, a decent, a decent little fish head soup tonight. It was that one more fateful step. Got him. Gill and a big old bullfrog. That's right, yeah, buddy. Yeah, dude. We're eating tonight. I saw a couple and I took some shots on my slingshot, but you know, obviously it's not as gonna be as effective as we know once you get one of the spirits done. Woo. Dude, I dig this primitive shelter, bro. Thanks, man. Or I, would, I guess the safest term would be emergency shelter. Emergency shelter, yeah. That'll oh, do. The bluegill of destiny. Oh, yeah. And the bullfrog of stubbornness, because apparently it took 17 days to get him. Yeah. So, if we take the bluegill, then we add it with my wood sorrel and my huge bag of sassafras. Look at this. Dude. You didn't get to see this. Look how, look how big that bag is. Nice. Oh yeah, it's full. It's yeah. half full or whatever. That's nice. So yeah, we're gonna have gonna be good. plenty of food. There's them frog legs. I mean, just massive, enormous chunks of meat. I mean, this could literally feed like I don't know, like six people. No, I'm just kidding. But now this is gonna be a nice, good bit of protein added to our little stew soup thing. It's gonna be good. We got ourselves some rain. 
At least the fire's still going. We got our uh, frog legs and fish in there. I'm gonna boil that up here in a minute. This is pretty tough. Oh, uh, raising the canopy up? Yeah. Smart move. Whew. As long as you don't get a strong wind, which you probably won't in this dense of a forest, you should be good. Hey, now that that's cooked, do you want to actually take uh, the plants that I gathered up and add, add actually add them to the thing to add some flavor to the meal? Definitely. Right on, bro. Lemon zest on the food. That wood sorrel, man, that's going to be, I think it's going to be fun. Be it's gonna be good. Yeah, it, it is. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be a funky stew, but it's gonna be good though. Look at that! Oh my goodness, we got frog legs, fish in the stew. I apologize for the noise, but I'm using my boots as a table go ahead and uh, get a little bit of this action going on right here oh yeah that looks so good oh my god bro it's so good is it good dude it's so good man dude I'm not even kidding dude I think it's the wood sorrel that saved this whole meal dude it's so good wow it just balances out the whole damn thing man, oh man, man. Dude, this is legit. I'm I'm so in there. Mm. Oh yeah. Oh dude, it's raining super hard. But we still got a pretty pretty decent dinner. I'm dry right now. Just gotta take my blessings. <laughs> Woo! Day two is over, and I'm going to bed. Cause this is pretty great. <sighs> Morning, everybody. Mm. Oh, that was a heck of a thunderstorm last night, man. We got ourselves some rain, and I'm going to bed. This is pretty great. For y'all who are watching day two, man, that lightning strike at the very end of, of the day was crazy. And that wasn't the only one. We got a couple after that that were like really close to camp. So mm, I think we got pretty lucky. But I got a few things I want to do today before we end up leaving on the last day. So come on. Well, y'all, this is where I was yesterday. I'm sure you thought I was going to the creek or something, but I had an axe instead of a water bottle. <laughs> but uh, since the rain has stopped, I want to try to collect, since the, today's the last day, I want to try to get a few pieces of fatwood from this pine tree where I collected that really good piece yesterday, a big old honking turkey leg. So I want to get a few pieces to take home because we don't have uh, fatwood and all that stuff out here. So uh, I'm going to have some fun. <laughs> Oh yeah, I can see Fatwood already poking its rear in its head already. Nice. What's 
So this fat wool will go all the way into the stump, but lucky for us, this is rotten and it's pine, so it's automatically soft. Yeah, buddy. That's a big, huge piece of fat wood. I gotta go clean it up, but I wanna get a few more of these. And we'll have a nice little collection to bring home. Whew. Uh. All right, folks. Well, that is a huge chunk of fat wood. It looks good, and there's way more here and around. So since today's my last day, I definitely wanna go harvest this stuff up because you guys understand, you guys who live in pine wood forests and have access to this stuff, this is very common occurrence. But for me, this is like a Make-A-Wish foundation. I know I'm not trying to make light of any kids who are sick, but I'm saying I don't have access to this. I have to travel a thousand miles to get access to it. So it's really awesome that I get access to go kind of pick the spots I want, go harvest it myself. And it's, it's a lot of hard work, but man, it is like epically rewarding. So let's go find some more of this stuff. You see all this? Oh. oh man. Like I said, you guys are probably gonna make fun of me, but these are some of the pieces that we forged or uh, cut off of dead pine logs um, that were just laying across here in the forest. And there is so much more in the truck that we just didn't hack through and kind of expose for you guys. We think we have about double this, right bud? We got about yeah. double this. Yeah, we got about 12 pieces all in all that we're gonna be hauling back, but man, I was like the, the quality of the resin, the really dark orange and amber colors in here is gonna be awesome. And like I said, man, this is super, super epic, but without wasting too, too much time, we have plenty of fat wood. I'm gonna take a couple pieces. You're probably gonna see this um, used cars my sales plug. You're probably gonna see this stuff on Four Directions of Bushcraft soon enough. Cause uh, this, this stuff was hand harvested. A lot of love went into this, man. Yeah, oh gosh. So uh, if you guys want just hand harvested fat wood that's probably going to be higher quality than the Honduran and Venezuelan crap that you find at K uh, Target and Walmart, man, hit it up. I'll drop a link if you guys want to learn any more about that. But uh, it's time to go tear down camp. I'm here with my buddy Chris, and we got to collect this fat wood and just be out here in the eastern woodlands, just in a place that I would never be able to just go very easily. And man, just the things that this forest has to offer that I just don't see back home in Texas is awesome. Well, time to take her down. I'll miss this one. <laughs> it definitely kept me safe. But we are in a national forest. We need to leave everything as it was before we got here. That's safe practice everywhere, but. Let's tear her down. 
Mylar held up pretty good. Ripped a little down there. We did it, bro. We did it. Bam. Nice. We're the frog champions of the world. <laughs> frog and bluegill. Go. This right here is what we call bushcrafting gold. If you want to figure out how we survey that shit. Um, what is it? What, what, what? Alright guys, so over a thousand miles, 23 hours, and two bus transfers later, finally back in Texas, and I'm home.